A lot of people are curious how we use these little keyboards. This is a CAS keyboard. It's a 35% keyboard that we sell at coffeebreakkeyboards.com. It makes a 30% keyboard different than larger keyboards, like a 60% or a, a 100% or a 75%. It doesn't have any F keys. It also doesn't have any numbers. And even smaller than a 40%, it doesn't have any of these keys on the side, like a shift key, a tab key, a backspace key. It makes it about as small as is practical. I mean, you could go smaller. You could knock off this bottom row. And then you get what we call a 30% keyboard, just a three-row keyboard that's 10 keys wide. Key, uh, a keyboard like the Gherkin is a 30%. Right, so this has the thumb keys, so we have space, and we have all the normal letters, so you can type. Brown Frox jumps over the lazy dog. All right, no problem. Notice I'm using my thumb to space. But we don't have the numbers. How do we do the numbers? The numbers are done by layering. So my thumb key does double duty. Not only can it space, but if I hold it down, it changes the behavior of the other keys. So it turns the top keys into numbers. So I can do one, two, three, four, and so forth. I also have some symbols on that layer. If I want to move around, I have another layer for that. I hold the A key to move around. Let's get the quick brown fox back. All right, so now I need to move around. I'm going to hold down the A key, and now I can navigate with my right hand, just in home position. Notice I'm using IJKL. So if I want to move around, I don't even have to reach down here for the arrows. I can just do it wherever I am. If I need to delete that, I can do it very quick by uh, entering the navigation layer, holding down shift, and then doing home, and then backspace. So it, it seems like a lot at first to keep all those things in mind. But once you have the muscle memory, it's just as fast and probably faster than a, a larger keyboard because I'm not moving around to do things. Uh, something, Some other things that aren't here, of course, are things like the shift key. So my Z does double duty. And that acts as a shift. Uh, my um, My enter key also acts as a shift. If I need to do a shift Z, for instance, I can do that. So we have a lot of keys that are doing double duty. Um, another thing I use a lot is combinations of keys. So there's no backspace here. When I need to backspace, what I do need to, what I do is uh, let's type in something wrong. Okay, the, say I needed to type in brown there, but I typed in foig instead. I need to do some backspacing. I use the O and P to, to give me a backspace. Notice that's about where I expect backspace to be anyway on my laptop keyboard or whatever, I'm usually reaching up there for backspace. So my muscle memory is intact, but I just map it to a combination of, a combination of keys. To be even faster for backspace, because my, my left thumb is, is a control. So this is, this is both a space bar, which I rarely use, because I usually just use space bar on my right thumb, but it also acts as a control when I hold it down. So now I can do control backspace to erase an entire word. Other combinations here, I use A and S for tab, I use Q and W for backspace, I use W and E for uh, tilde and the grave, um, and enter is L and quote. Well, that's about it for a CAS keyboard, that's how you use it. Some nice interesting things you can do because this is QMK to save some time is I have some dynamic macros uh, uh, on these keys. So this will record keystrokes when I hit that button. I can type in hello world and then stop recording and then I can play it back. So that saves a lot of repetitive keystrokes, especially when you're editing a bunch of stuff and you need to do the same key combinations over and over again. There's a lot of time-saving tricks in QMK and a lot of ways to make a small keyboard like this work just as fast and even faster than larger keyboards. All right, thanks for watching.